Dive into the world of battle for the Planet of the Apes, a 1973 movie that's more than just science fiction. This film marks the end of the original Planet of the Apes series, telling a tale of survival, conflict, and hope. But there's a lot more to this movie than you see on screen. There are many interesting behind-the-scenes stories, personal effects, and a mix of funny, surprising, and sad facts that might change how you see this film. Ever curious about the unknown stories from the making of this movie? What special behind-the-scenes moments happened during its production? These little-known facts are not just fascinating, but can also change our view of the movie. Also, think about how a movie can influence someone's life in a big way. How might Battle for the Planet of the Apes have inspired or affected people for real? Now, let's focus on you. What's your most memorable moment or personal connection to this movie? Did it resonate with you in a unique way? We're excited to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share those experiences that connect you to this well-known film. The fifth and final entry in the original Theatrical Apes series, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, is often considered the weakest link in the saga. This installment faces limitations likely due to budget constraints, particularly evident when compared to its predecessors. After the impactful setup in the previous film, Conquest, this sequel narrows its focus to a smaller scale, concentrating on a single apehuman community known as Ape City, which appears underpopulated. In this narrative, the peace between apes and humans is fragile. The story centers around the ape leader Caesar, portrayed with skill by Roddy McDowell, who embarks on a mission to the Forbidden City. His goal is to find recordings of his late parents, a quest that stirs resentment among the human survivors suffering from radiation sickness. Meanwhile, a militant guerrilla general, Aldo, played by Claude Akins, shows a growing eagerness for conflict. Despite its shortcomings, the film maintains a level of engagement, thanks in part to some well-crafted dialogue and memorable moments. The action scenes towards the end, characterized by a significant use of gunfire and explosions, albeit with minimal gore, add to the film's appeal. The narrative, crafted by story author Paul Dane and screenwriters John William Corrington and Joyce Hooper Corrington, struggles to match the compelling nature of its predecessors. However, director J. Lee Thompson, who also helmed Conquest, ensures that the film remains watchable and moderately entertaining. The performances stand out, particularly from seasoned actors like McDowell and Akins. They receive strong support from Lou Ayers, Paul Williams, Natalie Trundy, Severn Darden, Austin Stoker, France Nyan, and Paul Stevens. Notably, John Landis appears in a minor role as an ape, while the esteemed actor-filmmaker John Huston graces the film in wraparound segments as the wise lawgiver. Though the movie is engaging for its duration, it ultimately falls short of the high expectations set by its predecessors. Available in both a theatrical version and an extended cut, which adds about 10 minutes of footage, the film transitions into a television series following its conclusion. Overall, it earns a rating of 6 out of 10, reflecting its place as a somewhat disappointing yet watchable chapter in the Apes series. This film had a strong effect in many areas, not just in movies. It even inspired a music group. The Irish alternative rock band Fight Like Apes named themselves after a line used by Caesar, the main character in the film. This shows how the movie left a lasting impression, even though the band thought it was quite bad. The film also has interesting personal connections to its actors. For example, one of the actors in the film was related by marriage to Bob Crane and Sigrid Valdes, who were famous for their roles in Hogan's Heroes. Apart from this, the film influenced music in ways other than its own soundtrack. A well-known actor from the movie was in the music video for Voices That Care and sang in the choir for this charitable song. This shows that the actors were involved in important causes outside of their acting work. These details may seem unrelated, but together they show how the film influenced different areas and the varied interests and connections of its actors. Even though the film wasn't as well received as its earlier versions, it still had a strong effect in many areas, from culture to personal stories. In short, despite its criticisms and problems, the way the film influenced others and the different activities of its actors tell a story that goes beyond just the movie. It reminds us that films can inspire, connect, and involve people in unexpected ways. This movie, as part of a bigger series, didn't just add to the story of apes and humans, but also had a unique effect on different parts of culture and personal lives. 
The director's preference for filming on location rather than in a studio was a notable aspect of this movie's production. This approach, while challenging, added a layer of realism to the film's setting and atmosphere. The choice of real-world locations over studio sets contributed significantly to the authenticity of the depicted post-apocalyptic world. Tom Grise, a key figure in the film industry, had a notable connection with actor Eric Breeden. Breeden's roles in various projects associated with Grise, such as The Rat Patrol, 100 Rifles, and Lady Ice, highlight a recurring professional relationship between the actor and the director-producer. This collaboration across different projects suggests a strong professional rapport and a shared artistic vision. Roddy McDowell, who played a central role in this film, had an interesting brush with the Star Trek franchise. His potential involvement in Star Trek, including being the original choice for Trelane in The Squire of Gothos, and a consideration for voicing Armas in Skin of Evil, as well as possibly playing Constable Odo in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, indicates his versatility and appeal in science fiction genres. However, concerns about character portrayal and casting decisions ultimately led to these roles being filled by others. These near miscasting choices underscore McDowell's prominence in the science fiction community during that era. In conclusion, the director's preference for on location shooting, the recurring collaboration between Breeden and Grise, and McDowell's near involvement in Star Trek all add layers to the production and cultural context of the film. These elements, though separate from the main narrative, provide a broader understanding of the artistic environment in which the movie was created and the interconnectedness of the science fiction genre during that period. The movie's significance goes beyond just its story and making. A key point is the involvement of John Huston, a famous actor and director who played the lawgiver. Houston had a varied career, which included making commercials for big brands like DirecTV, Taco Bell, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Kellogg's, and Disney. This shows his wide range of work in different parts of the entertainment world. Also, Houston's family background is interesting. He is the great-grandfather of Sage Lavinia Houston and Cypress Knight Houston, which adds a personal touch to his role in the movie. His family's ongoing involvement in arts and entertainment highlights the enduring influence of his work. Houston also worked in theater. He was part of a theater group called Theater of 15, which stopped working in 1942. The group ended because of World War II, which caused many male members to leave, showing how big events in history can affect the arts. These details about Houston's career and life add to our understanding of the movie's setting and the diverse backgrounds of its cast. Having someone like John Houston in the movie, with his broad career and family history, adds to the movie's historical and cultural importance. In short, the movie does more than just finish the original Apes series. It shows the wide-ranging careers and personal stories of its cast and crew. John Houston's involvement with his extensive career and family background shows the different connections and influences that movies can have going beyond their direct stories and production.